The YJ-18 is a heavy-hitting cruise missile fielded by the Chinese Navy. It is the main armament used by China's modern destroyers against surface targets, including the Type 55 and the Type 52D destroyers. The YJ-18 is a huge improvement over the previous generation of Chinese anti-ship missiles, such as the YJ-83, with a large increase in range, better penetration against air defense, and a bigger punch. It combines the advantages of traditional subsonic missiles, for example in stealth and fuel efficiency, with the penetration and the hitting power of supersonic weapons. This video explains why the YJ-18 is a dangerous anti-ship weapon. The weapon's full name is Inji, which means Eagle Strike or Eagle Strike 18. The names of other indigenous cruise missiles, such as the YJ-12 and YJ-83, follows the same convention. The YJ-18 was developed by the China Aerospace Science and Industry Corporation, starting around the mid-1990s. The design process was heavily influenced by the Russian supersonic Shri M54E Club S, or the export version of the caliber anti-ship missile. In 1997, China imported the improved Kilo submarines from Russia, which also provided China with ready access to the caliber missile technology for study. The caliber was one of the world's best anti-ship weapon at the time. However, the YJ-18 is not a copy of the caliber. According to Chinese media, the YJ-18 is slightly smaller than the caliber, so its length is likely to be around 8 meters, with a diameter of about half a meter. Range is approximately 600 kilometers for the anti-ship variant, and the land attack variant should have even greater range. The YJ-18 has a subsonic cruising speed of Mach 0.8 while traveling to the target. But once it becomes visible to the enemy radar, and this happens around 40 kilometers from the target, the YJ-18 accelerates rapidly to a high supersonic speed of Mach 3. The weapon features a multi-stage propulsion system using a turbojet air-breathing engine for subsonic cruising and a solid fuel rocket motor in the terminal supersonic dash to the target. The warhead contains around 300 kilograms of high explosives, which is actually on the lower side. In comparison, the Russian caliber and the American Tomahawk has 450 kilograms. The YJ-18 can be launched from the vertical launch cells of the Type 055 destroyer and the 052D destroyer. The destroyers can adjust the number of YJ-18s to be carried, depending on mission requirements, due to the flexibility of the VLS system. The YJ-18 can also be launched from China's Type 093G Shang class submarine, which has vertical launch cells. The weapon does not suffer any reduction in range or capability when launched from underwater. There is also a truck-based variant of the weapon for coastal defense purposes. So a question that some people might be asking is, if supersonic speed is so good, why have a subsonic cruising speed? Why not just go supersonic all the way? The answer is that subsonic speed actually gives important advantages. Traveling at a subsonic speed is more fuel efficient than high supersonic speed, so this provides the YJ-18 a much longer range than continuous supersonic cruising. Not having to carry so much fuel also means that the YJ-18 can afford to be small, and therefore can be carried inside the regular VLS cells of Chinese destroyers. In contrast, 
the old Soviet supersonic cruise missiles have less range and are too big to fit inside VLS cells, so they had to be carried in canisters mounted on top of the deck. Subsonic cruise missiles are also stealthier. They can fly much lower where the air is denser and hug the surface of the sea, making them almost impossible to track by naval radars until they have cleared the radar horizon. The YJ-18 has ultra-low altitude sea skimming technology. The small size of the YJ-18 also makes it difficult to track by radar. In contrast, a continuous supersonic weapon has to fly somewhat higher, and they tend to be very big, with a big radar cross-section. This means that the enemy will be able to see it coming a lot earlier, giving them more time to react. To summarize, the subsonic cruising speed allows the YJ-18 to have a longer range, a smaller size and weight, and to be stealthier when approaching the target. If you enjoyed the video so far, please press the like button. So once the YJ-18 clears the radar horizon of the target, the terminal phase begins. This is when the YJ-18 accelerates to a high supersonic speed, and several features work together to penetrate the target's air defense. Naval radars, generally speaking, require a line of sight to the target, but the Earth is of course curved, so a low-flying missile cannot be seen by a ship's radar until it has cleared the horizon. Once the YJ-18 clears the radar horizon at 40 kilometers, it throws away its turbojet engine and switches to a high-speed rocket motor. The weapon accelerates rapidly to three times the speed of sound during this final dash to the target. At this point, the YJ-18 does two things to confuse the fire control radar of the target. Firstly, by shedding the turbojet engine, it basically reduces its own radar signature, because it now has a smaller diameter and no jet intake. Secondly, the rapid change in speed will also complicate the trajectory of interception. This makes the YJ-18 more likely to get past the enemy's air defense missiles. Once the YJ-18 gets within close range of the target, it performs evasive maneuvers in a snake shape or S shape. This maneuvering allows the YJ-18 to penetrate the final point defense, for example, close-in weapon systems. Chinese sources also claim that the YJ-18 has good anti-jamming technology to withstand the electronic countermeasures of the target. It can maintain a high hit rate in a complex electromagnetic environment. In summary, once the YJ-18 enters the terminal phase, it has a wide array of features to reduce the probability of interception. While the YJ-18 has a relatively small payload of explosives, it also has high kinetic energy upon impact because of the high speed of the weapon. The explosive warhead combined with the enormous kinetic energy can severely damage a warship with tens of thousands of tons of displacement with only one strike. Basically, China's YJ-18 benefits from the stealth, the range, and the flexibility of a subsonic missile, but also has the high penetration and the hitting power of a supersonic weapon in the terminal phase. It has the best of both worlds, essentially. The YJ-18's long range and lethality supports China's anti-access and area denial strategy to defeat US naval forces in a regional military conflict. According to one US report, the YJ-18 
was specifically designed to defeat the Aegis combat system. PLA Navy warships armed with the YJ-18 can strike at carrier battle groups at a long standoff range, which is made possible by China's extensive network of spy satellites. One class of Chinese warships that will be using the YJ-18 as its main anti-ship weapon is the Type 55 Large Destroyer. You should be able to see a video on the Type 55 on your screen right now.